The simple present tense refers to expressions such as Jason dribbles or I like sandwiches. There are two meanings to the simple present. The first meaning refers to permanent conditions, things that held true in the past, hold true now, and will always hold true in the future. The second meaning refers to an action or state that is happening right now. English learners have trouble with the simple present tense because first, what English speakers consider permanent may be different from what other language communities consider permanent. We'll take care of this problem by introducing what English speakers consider permanent conditions in this video. The second problem English learners face is choosing between the simple present and the present continuous when describing something happening right now. Both tenses refer to things happening right now, so there is an overlap of meaning. We'll tell you the situations in which native speakers prefer the simple present tense over the present continuous tense. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to use the present form of verbs, tell you the meaning of the simple present tense in detail, tell you its difference from the present continuous, and tell you the things that look like the simple present but are not. Now, this video is a sequel to this video, which explains how the tense system works in general. If you want to know more about tenses, please check it out. Anyway, let's begin. The simple present tense uses the present form of verbs, which is the form without endings such as ing, ed, or en. However, depending on the subject, you sometimes need to add an s or es after the verb. If your subject is i, you, we, they, or something plural like computers, you leave the verb alone, as in I love cheesecakes. On the other hand, if your subject is he, she, it, Tom, or anything singular like a computer, you add an s after the verb, as in she loves cheesecakes. When adding s after the verb, you need to do it in a slightly different way depending on the pronunciation of the verb. If the verb ends with S, SH, CH, X, or Z, add ES after the verb as in the following. If the verb ends with a consonant plus Y, drop the Y and add IES in the bag as in these words. And if you have the word go or do, just add ES in the bag as in goes and does. Now let's move on to the meaning of the simple present tense. The simple present tense has two different meanings. Let's take a look at each of them. The first meaning of the simple present tense refers to permanent conditions of someone or something. In other words, you use it for things that held true in the past, hold true now, and will hold true in the future. It's the default tense for things that cover all time zones and make the tense choice complicated. There are several typical cases that English speakers use the simple present for. The first case is when you're talking about someone's habit or tendencies, as in he bites his nails. In this case, he bit his nail in the past, bites it now, and will bite it in the future, so it's perfectly fine to use the simple present tense. The second case is when you're talking about permanent conditions, as in the human race generally has four limbs. The human race generally had four limbs in the past, has four limbs now, and will have four limbs in the future. Hence, it's fine to use the simple present tense. The third case is when you're talking about scientific truth, as in water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Water boiled at that temperature in the past, boils now, and will boil at that temperature in the future. So use the simple present tense. The fourth case is when you're talking about timeless classics, as in the analect says, do not do to others what you do not want done to yourself. The book was frequently quoted in the past, is still quoted today, and will be quoted in the future. Therefore, use the simple present tense when you quote classics. Here are some more example sentences. Moving on, the second meaning of the simple present tense refers to an action or state that is happening right now. As I mentioned earlier, the present continuous tense also has the same meaning, so many people wonder how English speakers choose between the two. In terms of meaning, there isn't much of a difference between the two tenses. Surprisingly, the largest factor that decides which words gets to be used is the dual meaning of the simple present. Since the first meaning of the simple present refers to permanent conditions, native speakers tend to use the simple present for things that are right in front of the speaker and listener. This way, they can avoid misunderstanding. Here's what I mean. 
Take the sentence, he swims. The sentence can either mean that he swims in the past, present, and future, or mean that he is swimming right now. On the other hand, he is swimming has only one interpretation. For this reason, native speakers tend to use the simple present in situations in which the thing is right in front of them and there is no chance of misunderstanding. These situations include sport events, as in Jason dribbles, shoots, and scores, storytelling, as in Achilles fights head on with Hector, and demonstrations as in I press the button and pull the lever. For the rest of the cases, native speakers prefer the present continuous tense. Here are some example sentences. Alright, let's move on to the last chapter of this video, the subjunctive mood. Sometimes you see the simple present tense used in a weird way, as in the CEO demanded that Jason stop the new project immediately. The tense is all mixed up, past tense here, present tense there, and the verb agreement is all messed up too. For instance, the subject is Jason, but the verb stop doesn't have S after it. Well, there's nothing wrong in this sentence, because the sentence is not using the simple present tense. Instead, it is using the subjunctive mood. English speakers agree that if one uses words like demand, suggest, or order in the sentence, one must also use the base form of verbs when explaining what is being demanded. For this reason, the following sentences are all grammatically correct. You may ask, oh my god, why do English speakers keep such a strange rule? Can't they just use the normal verb form as in the CEO demands that Jason stops the project immediately? Well, this rule was once considered an innovation, making people's life much easier. English language has a tradition of distinguishing things that actually happened and things that are only in people's imagination. In fact, Old English had separate verb forms for each case. The verb form for real things was called the indicated mood, while the verb form for imaginary things was called the subjunctive mood. For instance, take the word villain, which is the Old English version of the word will. The indicated mood with a second person singular subject looked like this, while the subjunctive mood looked like this. Demanding is also considered imaginary because at the moment you demand, what you demand for is only in your head. Anyway, one day, English speakers finally realized that there are too many verb forms to memorize. So they decided to get rid of the verb form for imaginary things and replace it with an easier formula. They decided that if one uses words whose meaning has to do with demands, one has to use the base form of verbs for imaginary part as in the CEO demanded that Jason stop the project immediately. So, please don't confuse this verb form with the simple present tense. If you want to know more about the subjunctive mood, please check out this video. Alright, this is it for the simple present tense. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section and hit subscribe for more English lessons. It was nice having you. Please check out the videos on other tenses and goodbye.